your sermon is not that much fun. In fact, you have to be a little brave with me today, because we're going to dive deep into these verses from the 14th chapter of John that we heard. This is, after all, what we're meant to do during the Easter season, to reconsider Jesus' words in light of the resurrection. And this isn't an easy task, because during the season of Easter, placed before us are some of the most complex stories and sayings of Jesus the Gospels have to offer. And that's the case today. And so, I want you to be ready. And I want to invite you to grab your bulletin and turn to the Gospel reading, turn it there, or grab a Bible from your reading rack if you want, and find John chapter 14. Because we're going to wade into these first seven complex and compelling verses. So Jesus says, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, if it were not so, would I have gone? Would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. How often these words are misunderstood, misconceived, and misused. Well, meaning Bible readers encounter these words and miss Jesus' point altogether. Well-intentioned preachers sometimes get it completely backwards. So let me shake things up a bit today by telling you that what Jesus says in the 14th chapter of John is not primarily about heaven. And it's not primarily about Jesus being the exclusive way to get there. But it's tempting to think that, isn't it? In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. It kind of sounds like Jesus is saying, there's lots of plush rooms for you in the mansion of heaven, and Jesus is going to prepare a place for you, put your name on the door, and fluff the pillows, and have your room ready for your arrival. In that scenario, Jesus is something like a, a divine housekeeper who is going ahead of us to prepare our own place Heaven. That's a tempting sentiment, but that's not really what Jesus is saying. And when Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me, it kind of sounds like Jesus is setting himself up as the exclusive way into this heavenly paradise. It's his way or the highway, belief in him is a must, and all those who don't make the cut will be left out. In that scenario, Jesus is something like a, a heavenly bouncer standing at the velvet rope entrance into eternal bliss, letting some people in and telling others that their name is not on the list. You've probably heard that sort of message or, or pictured that kind of scene before, but that's not really what Jesus is saying either. Actually, what Jesus is saying in these verses, in this whole conversation with the disciples in John 14 is much deeper, much deeper than that. So to begin, we need to understand what's happening in this story. In the narrative of John's Gospel, John 14 comes right at the beginning of Jesus' farewell message to his disciples. Jesus is in the final night with his disciples. He's shared a last supper with them. He's washed their feet. He's given them a new commandment. And now he begins to prepare them for his departure. His departure, of course, will mean his arrest and trial and death on a cross. Jesus is not going to be with the disciples for much longer, and so his words during this final hour are meant to prepare them for life without him. And so look at the Gospel reading as it's printed there. There we find Jesus saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. In other words, do not worry. Do not worry about what is about to happen. Instead, believe that is trust. Trust in God and trust in me. 
that Jesus says, that important verse, verse 2, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. The Father's house sounds like a, a location, but Jesus' emphasis is not so much on a house as, as a place. What Jesus is getting at is the idea of a house being about a relationship. The house is not a place you go, but a relationship you are drawn into. An authority you are placed under. Think about it this way. If a dad gets upset at his son because that child is doing something like talking back to his mom or being mean to his brother, well, the dad might say something like, you aren't going to do that in my house. In that situation, the dad isn't just upset that something bad is happening in his house that is within the four walls where they live. No, when he says house, he's talking about the relationship that exists. I'm your dad, you are my son, and you live under my influence and care. And that makes a difference. When Jesus says, in my father's house, he's talking about more than a place. He's talking about that relationship, that influence and care of the Father. And about this house, he says, there are many dwelling places. Dwelling places is, is actually a good way to put it. Some older translations use the word rooms or mansions, which just gets us locked down in the literal meaning of a house again. The dwelling places is an intriguing phrase because John, the Gospel writer, has made a big deal throughout his Gospel about dwelling. Dwelling. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus abides with us, dwells with us. Jesus abides in the Father, and the Father abides in Him. Jesus will send the Spirit to His disciples who will dwell with Him. In the Gospel of John, the word dwell is a very significant word, pointing to who Jesus is and what he has come to do. Jesus is from the Father, and he has come to be with God's people. And so when Jesus says, in the Father's house there are many dwelling places, he is saying that there is room, an abiding, an abundant space for you to live Dwell with God the Father. And so Jesus, in verse 3, says, He goes to prepare a place. And where is He going? After He departs from His disciples, what's the next thing He will do? He will go to His death. Not to some mansion in the sky, but to the cross. That's where the preparation begins. Jesus is going to the cross and then returning to the Father by the power of his resurrection life. Before when Jesus says he goes to prepare a place, it's like he's saying, my death and my return to God will make it possible for you, for you to join in on the relationship that the Father and I share, so that where I am, you may be also. And that's the key there. Where Jesus is, his disciples will be also. The way into relationship, the way into the household of God, is through Jesus. Being close to him means being close to God the Father. This is why Jesus is able to say in verse 6, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except now notice what Jesus doesn't say. He doesn't say, all those who don't believe in me are damned for eternity. He doesn't say, Christianity is the only legitimate religion in the world and everything else is hogwash. What he says is, I am the way to the Father. The Father, that is, the one who so loved the world that he sent me. The one whose blessing and grace Jesus has taught about. The one who will send the Spirit, the Advocate, to help in all things.
Jesus isn't talking about a God or a religion. Jesus is talking about the Father, his Father, and our Father. The one we have come to know through the scriptures, the one we have come to know through Jesus. Jesus' mission has been and forever will be to show us the Father. But you see, how this passage from John 14 sometimes makes us get that backwards. As if what Jesus really wants is to keep people out. No one gets in here except through me, says the holy baptist. The words of John 14 are about Jesus letting people in, in on the relationship between him and the Father that is now available to all through Jesus. Thus Jesus says in verse 7, If you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. And how is it? That the disciples have seen the Father? How is this so? Because they have seen Jesus. Jesus is the way. To see God, to be in relationship with this one we call Father, doesn't require some secret code, or special past, or special privilege status. To know Jesus is to know the way. It's not about a destination. How about understanding that in Jesus, God has revealed all we need to know. So I began by cautioning that what Jesus says in the 14th chapter of John is not primarily about heaven, and not primarily about Jesus being the exclusive way to get there, and I hope you understand how this is so. Jesus, in this passage, isn't really interested in heaven, the place he is preparing is not a future hope of the saints, but a present reality that is breaking into the world through him, through his death and his resurrection. There is a dwelling place available in the house of God now through the one who was sent to dwell with us, Jesus. He is the way to salvation. That is salvation now, life with God now way into this salvation because Jesus is salvation. That's the good news for us in this passage. Not that there is some future hope that Jesus has attended to as our heavenly housekeeper. Not that we are in and all those who don't know Jesus like we do are bound to happen. No, the good news is that through Jesus, God has made room for us. There is plenty of space to dwell in the gracious home of God. God is roomy. And the loving relationship that sent Jesus into the world is now open to us. God wants to be in relationship with us and with all. And in Jesus, he has made the way.